Well, Sid will be answering your questions in the chat. He's actually the head of our uh, API team. Uh, he runs all of our API development and design. Uh, if you haven't heard of DriveWealth, you've probably heard of many of our partners. What we do is we support uh, companies all around the world who are looking to bring really awesome investment products to their customer base. Uh, so if you're here in the US like I am, uh, if you have Cash App on your phone, if you've ever tried to invest in stock on Cash App, uh, we're the infrastructure behind that. If you're in Europe and you've done the same thing on Revolut, uh, we also power them. Uh, and many, many others around the world in Africa, South America, India, Southeast Asia, pretty much universal. Um, and I'll give you a couple seconds about me and then we'll, we'll look at some cool stuff. Uh, again, my name is John. Uh, my background is in software design and development. I uh, led product at DriveWalt in the beginning of our, of our API platform and building it up to what it is today. Uh, and now I also do the same thing for our partners. So if any of you are not joining our breakout room a little bit later and you're curious about how you could launch an investment product yourself, uh, that's my job to, to give you some guidance and I'd be happy to tell you a little bit about what it takes and, and how all those pieces work together. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing here and we'll take a look at a little bit of what the DriveWealth platform does. Uh, all right, screen should be up. Let me know if you don't hear, if you don't see, if you don't hear me. Um, so what we're going to take a look at today is we're going to look at an example demonstration here. Um, again, our product is an API platform. And so sometimes it's a little bit difficult to envision what do the APIs actually do? Uh, how do they wind up working for the customer? And so in this case, what you're seeing on the left-hand side here uh, is actually an example banking app. And let me just refresh this, make sure I got a valid session here. And so this, this workflow, uh, we actually designed this just to showcase what an app could look like. All of our partners wind up having uh, ultimate control over what that experience does and how they present these offerings. And then as we go through, you'll start to see some of those API requests to hopefully demystify what part is the, the partner and what part is, is drivable here. Um, so in this specific example here, you know, one of the things that uh, I like to talk about a lot is, uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of this concept of the, the rebundling of FinTech. Uh, where we had a lot of one-off services for lending or savings or investing. And now uh, a lot of digital wallets and banks are, are really trying to reincorporate all of those products under, under one app. And so here we're envisioning uh, a banking type platform. I have some money in there right now, $845. Uh, I have some spending activity, as you can see on the bottom. And what we're going to do today is we're going to show how that customer can go from just a banking customer to also having investing on as well. Um, and so in this case, it's, it's a very simple self-directed app where I'm going to choose that I want to buy a specific stock today. Uh, there's many different flavors that our platform winds up taking. Uh, you know, we're even kind of showcasing here, for example, a lot of our partners try to show different themes to uh, consider or different categories of stocks. Uh, some of our partners actually like to suggest or make certain recommendations about what a customer should invest in. But for the purpose of this demo, let's just imagine, you know, today I woke up, uh, I went to get my cup of coffee. And even during a pandemic, every time I go past Starbucks, there's a line of 50 cars uh, out, out the, uh, the drive-thru. And so I want to invest in Starbucks. I think that's going to really perform well. Uh, so as you can imagine, uh, from maybe uh, investing experiences that you've dealt with. There is some onboarding. We, we do have to get this customer opened with a brokerage account. We have to have some, some place to store their money and their securities. Um, but one of the really neat things that we do at DriveWealth is we get to leverage a lot of what our partner already has done. So this partner here, they're a bank. They already know pretty much everything there is to know about you that we need as a broker to create the account. And so maybe it's something as simple as, hey, I'm going to confirm my, my social security number because I'm a U.S. citizen. Uh, and then here's some questions that maybe the bank doesn't have. These are things that, you know, you're required to answer if you open a brokerage account in the U.S., like, do you work for a stockbroker? Are you a politician? Um, so they'll ask me some things like that. But as soon as I hit this complete button, you know, boom, we're done, right? We have a nice green check mark. We're ready to uh, continue with the investing product. And it really is that quick and simple. And under the hood, I have a brokerage account now. Uh, we've done all the regulatory reporting, we've done the tax reporting, uh, any of those forms that we need to fill out, whether this is a US or an international customer, uh, we've done all of that. And so from a client perspective, you can imagine, uh, I know many of you do work in the, in the neobank space, you could send a push notification out saying, hey, we have investing now available on the app. And you know, all of the customers who tap that could go from never having invested before to having a brokerage account in a couple seconds, which is something that you certainly can't say about you know, finding a broker in the app store, downloading it and, and starting to open a, an account from scratch. Uh, but I'll show you what it looks like actually under the hood. Um, so what did we do to, to get that moving? Um, well, the first thing that we had to do was we had to, to take all the personal information out of our database that we're gonna need. 
Um, so again, this bank already knows my name, my, my contact information, maybe even already had my, my tax ID number. So we're going to send some information over to, to DriveVault. DriveVault is going to take that data. Uh, and then the second thing, the, the only other required thing here is defining the type of account that we're ultimately creating. Um, in this case, again, it's, a, it's an experience where I'm going to buy an individual security. Uh, and because of that, you'll notice we, we set the account management type here to self. That means the customer is self-directing the activity. They're choosing what to buy, what to sell, and, and when to do that. If we were dealing with a product here where uh, this app, uh, this banking app, was actually going to automate, you know, where does my money go? What does it get invested in? And things like that. Think about like the robo-advisor type of model. Uh, then we would simply set this to managed. And that would clue our system into the fact that there's an advisor that's ultimately going to be making the, the trading decisions in this account. Uh, but you'll see right here, we have this account number. Uh, we actually did create an account on the driver platform. And I can even show you uh, from, our, uh, from our website perspective, if I just plug in that, that account number here, DWVN477, uh, here is that account that we, we configured. And so here's all the information that we wound up uploading in that user creation, obviously a lot more than, than we actually need, but here's all the detail that we collected. And then here's that, that account. And it's a, a zero balance account, as you'd expect. There's nothing yet in there, um, but this is now ready and opened and, and available for me to, to trade in. So I'll continue here. We'll just keep going. And now let's go ahead and say, I'd like to invest uh, $50 in, in Starbucks today. Now, if any of you uh, actually hold Starbucks in your portfolio, you probably know that Starbucks trades at much higher than, than a $50 price. Uh, and that is uh, something that we can uniquely enable on our platform. We were actually uh, the first company in the world to offer real-time transacting in fractional shares uh, and the ability to trade you know, very, very small, almost de minimis amounts of, of stock. Um, and there's really, really cool applications to that. One is something like what you're seeing here where I was never prompted for a share quantity. Right? We just ask the customer, hey, how much do you want to invest today? And that could be across many securities. It could be in a local currency. There's, there's many forms that could take on. But it's obviously for this customer, especially if I've never done this before, a lot easier for me to see that input rather than see, hey, you know, type in 0 0.5077 shares uh, and have to do all that calculation myself. Um, so very simple here. As soon as I authenticate this trade, you'll notice how this goes over to, to our system. Very simple, account number, market order for Starbucks, and we're buying $50. Uh, and we take that, that fiat amount and we figure out not only what's the, the correct quantity at that time, but we're recalculating that. There's a lot of logic behind the scenes. This way, if I'm putting in this order at midnight, right, I can still make sure when the market opens in the morning, I'm always going to invest $50. I'm never going to overspend. I'm never going to underspend. Um, and that's something that we think is really critical because if you've never done this before and you want to invest $50 and you get a rejection because the market moved and it actually wound up being 51 that you needed, uh, that's a really jarring experience. Um, you're probably also noticing, uh, since, since we all saw uh, Zach's demo of, of the Paxo system, there's a lot of parallels here. And a lot of what we've uh, designed has actually been inspired by the crypto space. There's a lot of people who uh, interact with crypto as their first ever investment vehicle and then come over to equities, especially younger investors. And so that's why, for example, our, our shares own goes out to, to eight decimal points. One that you know, gives you uh, a little bit of parallel to maybe that, that crypto offering that you've interacted with. But two, uh, it also gives us a lot of granularity. If you wanna buy one cent of Berkshire Hathaway A-Class, which trades at $350,000 a share, you could do it. I don't know why you would, but you, you could do that purchase. Uh, and we have a lot of customers who buy 10 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks of, of Berkshire A. And then finally, we'll just see here, um, and that was all live. If you want to go pull up Starbucks price, you'll see that was the, the correct price of Starbucks there. Um, but everything from this point out, our, our platform gives you. So here, for example, here's my Starbucks position. Uh, it's calculated live, my market value versus my cost basis. Uh, here's my profit or loss, for example, that one penny because we, we gained some, uh, some value in Starbucks stock there. And same thing on our website. If I go back to that account that we created, um, and this would be the, the bank staff, for example, logging in and looking at what's going on with this customer, here's that Starbucks position that he wound up entering. Um, so as you can tell, the, the, the real, uh, I think, important value of our platform is that not only do we provide all these unique tools, uh, like the ability to trade in these really small amounts and open accounts instantly and things like that, but you have all the APIs available right away uh, for you to build far less infrastructure to wind up bringing this, this product to market. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it back to the VSUM team. Happy to uh, answer any questions and then go to the breakout sessions.